breaking news. I think this happened a few hours ago, um, since I last have been on the internet and shit, regarding the one and only OJ Simpson, dead at 76 years old. R.I.P. OJ Simpson. Um, I wasn't aware that he was battling cancer. Um, it appears that he probably might have kept that quite private to some extent. Maybe people didn't know, but I probably really wasn't aware of it. Um, I seen him a lot on the Cameron and May show, but then finally enough, I did see a clip of him on the Cameron and May show discussing it. He didn't really get into it a lot. He said he was going to fight it, whatever. He said he'd be okay, but I guess it wasn't something that he wanted to talk about, you know, often, which is pretty, you know, which is pretty admirable in that regard. When people have those sort of um, terminal illnesses and they decide to just deal with it privately. And they don't basically want to talk about it that much and they just want to be with their family. You you know, I, I respect that a lot. I really do. Because I feel like nowadays people use any anything that happens to them as an opportunity to get attention. As sick and as mad as that can be, we all know that to be the case. We've already seen it with flipping gender reveals, right? What are gender reveals? Gender reveals aren't, you know, they're not, they're not, they're, they don't exist other than just to give the parents attention and to kind of scratch that itch and give them a non-stop fucking, you know, lying lineage of fucking content they can put out um, about their kid and shit without their consent. Whatever, we move on. So this is Coach of TMZ. OJ Simpson dead at 76 after cancer battle. Let's actually read the actual article below. It says, OJ Simpson, one of the most famous um, high-profile American um, of all time, is dead after a cancer battle. Um, it says, here's a quote from the family of OJ Simpson on his actual um, official Twitter account. So no more hello Twitter worlds. It says, on April 10th, our father, Oriental James um, Simpson, um, succumbed to his battle with cancer. He was surrounded by his children and grandchildren. During this time of transition, his family asks that you please respect his wishes, their wishes, sorry, for privacy and grace, the Simpson family. You don't really, that's a that's a real old guy name, isn't it? He must have been born in, what, the 50s or something? Maybe even earlier than that? Oriental. Oriental. There's probably not a lot of kids who have been born Oriental, right? Or Oriental James. I guess it might be double barrel, but yeah. RIP to Oriental James Simpson. It continues a former NFL great who stood trial for the double murder of his ex-wife Nicole Brown Simpson and another friend Ron Goldman in the 90s only to be acquitted passed away Wednesday in Las Vegas this according to his family. They said that he was surrounded by his children, his grandchildren when he died on Wednesday night. Simpson's attorney confirmed. I wonder if one of his kids, one of his Gen Z kids, one of his Gen Z grandchildren leant in and said, Granddad, Granddad, come on, you can tell me. Come on, Granddad, you can tell me. Did you do it? <laughs> I wonder if one of the grandkids let in on his da on his on his deathbed and said, Grandma, come on, you can tell me. You're gonna go out now, you can tell me. Did you actually do it? Because that's the one question that I've always been astounded by. Because if you watch the documentaries, if you watch some of the old footage, if you see the evidence, it's pretty astounding he got away with it, especially being a black guy, especially back then. That goes to show you the power of talent, the power of sport. He was so good at football, people were willing to convince themselves that he didn't commit that double murder. <laughs> People were willing to convince themselves that some other black guy, because I remember, I think there was actually a witness. Some witness said they saw like a big black dude walking towards Nicole Brown's house. So we have to now suspend belief that another black dude was out to kill Nicole Brown. I think at the time as well, which is really sad, I think she was pregnant at the time as well. I think so. I think she, she wasn't showing um, a lot, but I think she was pregnant. And then um, he obviously ended up murking, allegedly murking the guy friend as well who dropped off the sunglasses, who I think people suggested the guy friend of Ron Goldman was a, was a gay best friend or something or whatever. But still, bloody hell, bro. Nearly cut off fucking Nicole Brown's head with the force that he allegedly, with the force that whoever did it allegedly um, struck her the neck with. I remember seeing one documentary about it where they said that there were like blood trails next to the door or I think blood trails leading up to his house the other glove that used in the murder was found at his house it's like you see all this evidence and you're like hold on so how did he get away with this like especially when you think about the Tory Lanez trial right that happened recently the Tory Lanez trial if I'm not mistaken like there wasn't it wasn't it wasn't equivocally they could prove that he actually shot Megan Thee Stallion I think there were proof that he maybe held a gun but then the theory is with people that defend Tory, oh, he held the gun because he was wrestling it off of Kelsey, the, the former best friend. But they couldn't prove it, but they still put him in jail for, for prison for, for 10 years or whatever, maybe. So you look at that, you're like, rah, the court system is so random, isn't it? Because on one end, you know, we know she got hurt in Megan Thee Stallion, but we can't, we can't definitively prove how she got hurt. Did she step on glass after the bullet ricocheted off the window? Did she get shot directly in the foot? Like, what happened? We don't know. We don't know who exactly did it. 
but we still put someone in prison. With the OJ thing, all the evidence is pointing towards some black guy <laughs> that Nicole Brown knows probably murdered her and her friend. Yet you can't convict him. It shows how different the world was back then. Maybe with evidence, maybe with lack of DNA, whatever. Even the glove scene is hilarious, right? The glove scene is fucking hilarious. As if that proves anything. It's fucking, it's so fucking dumb. But let's continue anyway. OJ had reportedly been battling prostate cancer in recent years and his health took a turn for the worse um, with him landing in the hospice care within the, first, within the past few months. Um, word about OJ's cancer diagnosis first made the rounds in February with the local um, outlet reported that although the details were hazy as OJ's response to the news at the time when he denied that he was in hospice but didn't address the cancer report. Okay, cool. Um, adding to the mystery was the fact that OJ touched on the cancer diagnosis in 2023 with a video posted when he said he caught some form of cancer but suggested he'd beaten it. In any case, the cancer came back and claimed his life about a year later. OJ had been looking frail and leading up to the passing, including an outing in January when he spotted using a cane. The last time OJ posted a video of himself talking about the Super Bowl where he said he was rooting for his former team, the San Francisco 49ers. He seemed to be in good shape, spirits then, and he was seated in a clip talking from the backyard. That jersey probably still goes for a lot of money now, isn't it? That's, look, look at the... Back in the day, football jerseys were fucking amazing. I wonder why they don't play on AstroTurf anymore. I guess it's probably like for injuries, right? For those of you who play... who Those of you in America who watch football and stuff, I'd love you to let me know, like, what the hell... Why do they stop playing on AstroTurf? Because if I zoom in on the pictures, some of these players have like regular running shoes on, like regular sneakers and shit. I wonder why you guys stopped playing on AstroTurf. It looks fucking cool, I'm not going to lie, with the long socks and the fucking quarter length trousers. The kits back in the day look so good. It goes about saying OJ's life was uh, monumentous for a variety of reasons, lots of good and bad, especially later, post-football years. Before that, though, he was a beloved All-American hero on the field, a Heisman winner from USC and a Buffalo Bills legend. Even after football, he was a bona fide, um, a bona fide A-list in Hollywood, acting in tons of movies and TV shows and famously serving as a face and pitchman for Hurts for many, many, many years. Of course, um, all of that goodwill left in the 1990s when he was accused of heinous murder. Nicole Brown was so beautiful, isn't it? Like, bloody hell, OJ. What, the, what, what would have made you so angry, allegedly, to kill her? She was so beautiful. What could she have done? I wonder. Was it cheating? Did they just have an argument? Did you just snap? Was it CTE? God almighty, man. She was a very attractive woman. Um, his death marks the end of a multi-decade saga of crime and intrigue surrounding OJ, which peaked after the brutal slayings of Nicole and Ron in 1994. In the aftermath of what was dubbed as a trial of the century when OJ was prosecuted on national TV. There's Ron as well, R.I.P. to Ron Goldman. Even before he was apprehended by the police for questioning in the immediate aftermath of the murder, OJ led the cops on a low-speed chase. Yeah, the Bronco scene. Honestly, what? imagine being in America at the time, parking your car and seeing former Heisman winner, right? Legend in football, OJ Simpson, coherent, you know, tearing it up down a fucking freeway driving his Ford Bronco. Like, you, it, it probably must have been surreal to see this pan out with massive amounts of cops chasing him, like old school GTA style, hol helicopters above. It must, look at the people. They're everywhere, hanging on, looking, watching this thing. It must have been so wild to see this in real time. <laughs> it must have been so wild. <laughs> Once he was caught, a case started to form with him as a prime suspect. Prosecutors eventually charged him, alleging that OJ carried out the horrific stabbing deaths of Nicole and Ron at the Brentwood home in June, on June 12th, 1994. OJ hired a so-called dream team of defence lawyers led by the Johnny Cochran who ran point and helped pick apart the state's case. A fundamental um, element of Cochrane latched onto during the case was the fact that LAPD detective Mark Falcom um, had made racist remarks in the past, which OJ's defense team suggested led him to planting a bloody glove at Simpson's home. That works as a defense. Oh, the cop planted the glove. Yeah, well, back in the day, that's why I would imagine guys who are in, into crime, career criminals, will probably tell you getting away with crimes in the 80s and 90s must have been such a blast. You could probably rob a bank, get away with murder. So it's so much easier back then, especially without CCTV and shit. You could get away with so much stuff back then. You probably can't get away with it. nothing nowadays, which is why probably people do a lot of like petty crime stuff. But actual legit murder and like, you know, other shit, it's not going to happen. There's no way you're getting away with that shit. There's too much cameras and fucking, what do you call it? Um, 
cameras on people's houses and shit as well, ring cameras and shit. It's impossible. This also led to another pivotal point in the trial when OJ's team requested he be allowed to try on the gloves in court and they ended up not fitting him perfectly, which is dumb because why does it matter if the gloves don't fit perfectly? Do you know what I mean? What does that actually prove? It's such a dumb point. Like, people wear gloves that don't fit all the time. <laughs> anyway, that prompted Cochrane to eventually utter the famous line during the closing, if it doesn't fit, you must have quit. In the end, the jury bought the case. OJ was, which again is another proof that in court cases it's not about whether or not someone's guilty or not, it's whatever you can prove they're guilty or not. OJ was acquitted of the murder charges. Um, he was sued by the Goldmans and Browns in civil court for wrongful death, and that case played out in Santa Monica, where a jury found him liable for the deaths of Nicole and Ron. He was ordered to pay tens of millions of dollars. So he was found liable for the deaths, but he wasn't found guilty of the murders. <laughs> Honestly, but as a black man, I don't know how he did it, but fucking hell absolutely wild despite being dodged um dogged by the families for the money oj mostly avoided paying the judgment he didn't even pay and eventually filed um fled los angeles and settled down in, in las vegas where other legal trouble started to find him including tax woes and eventually another criminal case in 2007 he was accused of busting into a vegas hotel room in an attempt to recover sports memorabilia that he believed had been stolen from him rolling up to confront the new owner with a bunch of goons in tow armed with weapons too <laughs> yeah, OJ is just a bad. OJ, even in these old years, was out here trying to be a stick up guy, a stick up granddad. Stick up granddad, you know? Fucking hell, OJ. Relax, bro. He eventually was arrested, charged, and prosecuted, and eventually. And, and the person that stole the things as well, you're a bitch. The person that stole his memorabilia and then fucking filed a police report, you're a fucking bitch. You know what I mean? Like, it, there should be some honor amongst thieves. There isn't, but there should be. He was eventually charged. And prosecuted and ultimately convicted on all charges, OJ was then in prison for a long time until he was released on parole in 2017. Once OJ got out of prison, he ended up settling down in Sin City, where he lived a relatively private and peaceful life out in the public eye, although he was active on social media, often posting on Twitter and X with opinions on sports, politics and others. Of course, his reputation was completely destroyed by then, partially because many believe he was actually confessed to the 94 killings in a book and subsequent interview he did yeah the book is fucking amazing what's the book again um i think it's like it's oj simpson i didn't it's like something i didn't kill my wife or something it's i didn't let's see i didn't kill my wife i think that's the cover of it i remember seeing an old picture of it back in the day it's fucking wild yeah there we go he put he put this fucking book out imagine Imagine how much of a psycho you have to be to put a book like this out. <laughs> I didn't kill my wife, but if I did, here's how I do it. He was literally spitting in the face of the courts, like giving no fucks in the slightest. Can you imagine a black man in 2024 getting away with this? It's impossible. Never happening that they'll get away with it. Even LeBron James couldn't get away with this. You know what I mean? And he's really good at basketball. Like, there's just something about OJ back in the day that just, I don't know, people just, you know, were drawn to and they were like, hey, you know what? He didn't do it. He didn't fucking do it. If he said he didn't do it, he didn't do it. Um, of course, his reputation was completely destroyed by then, partially because many believe he actually confessed to the 94 killings in a book and subsequent interview he did in the 2000s, touting it as hip uh, hypothetical, plus everything else that had transpired over the years. Um, look at that. Look at the scene, bro. The amount of blood. God almighty. And yet... And he was also approached by lots of fans post-prison centres, posing for pics often. He was also said to still have support by some of his family, including his children. OJ was 76. Now, that's one thing, right? Have you guys heard this theory? Have you guys heard this theory that I just learned about on Twitter about his son? Allegedly, there's a theory out there that OJ actually was protecting his son who actually did the murder. He took the fall for his son. Fucking wild. Let's play this clip. Courtesy, I don't know who's this. Um, it's a content creator on TikTok. Her name is Ray Spirits. Ray spelled R A E underscore S P I R I T S on TikTok. This is a fucking crazy video, but listen to this. 
Not sure if I buy it, but listen to this anyway. So I've always been like 100% team OJ Simpson is guilty. Recently, it was brought to my attention to check out his son, Jason. Here's what I found. Prior to the killings, Jason was diagnosed with intermittent rage disorder. He had stopped taking his medication two months before the murders. He wrote a note in which he talked about killing anyone who hurt a loved one of his. In his past, Jason had nearly killed a girlfriend and seriously injured another. At the time of the murders, he was on probation for attacking his boss with a knife. He has no alibi that can be supported as to where he was during the murders. <laughs> his time card for work that night was handwritten, even though the electric clock was working. A black navy watch cap with animal fur on it was found at the crime scene. Photographs obtained from Jason's storage locker showed that he wore them often and that he had a dog. In this locker was also a knife that matched the description of what was used for the murders. He had field knife training from the Navy Academy. The day after the murders, OJ hired a top criminal attorney to defend Jason, although he wasn't a suspect. Police never even tested the fingerprints found at the scene or the DNA under Nicole's fingernails against Jason. After hearing all this, what do you guys think? That is wild, if true. If the whole reason this went where it went was because OJ was doing what any probably parent would do and defending his son, who actually did the murder. Yikes. I don't know what's true. don't know what isn't true. But either way, what a crazy end to a um, very crazy story, to be completely fair. It would be nice if we would get the truth about it. We probably will never get the truth, completely honest. It's probably just one of those things we just have to kind of, you know, decide, hey, it's kind of over with. But the really funny thing about it is that... Um, Khloe Kardashian's been trending too because people believe that Khloe, you know, um, what you call it, people believe that OJ Simpson's actually Khloe Kardashian's real dad because I think at one point he dated, you know, um, cross the Chris Jenner back in the day uh, or maybe they might have hooked up and shit. So she's been trending too at the same time. People basically sending out condolences and sorry for your loss and shit. I was fucking laughing. I was literally laughing when I saw that shit. But yeah, RIP OJ Simpson. Um, whether or not we'll ever find out if he did it or not is remains to be seen. But, you know, according to the evidence, according to what you see online, it's just like, it's impossible that he didn't do it. <laughs> you know, it's one of those type of things. And it's quite wild that he got away. He didn't really get away with it because he got a quitted answer. But, you know, it's kind of wild. But either way, RIP OJ Simpson, RIP OJ Simpson.